All right, Berean, welcome to another week of Chapel. I am joined by Judy Bowman. Uh, welcome, Judy. Thank you, Nick. Judy is in the state of, where are you, Judy? Well, I live in Lynchburg, Virginia, so that's home. But today, where are you? Uh, today, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, and, and you have a, a very unique sign behind you with a map. Yes. I, I, I think, I, is, are you going to tell us about that later? I, I can, anytime, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, well, Judy's a, a missionary and an evangelist and somebody who I want everyone to get to know. Uh, folks, if you remember, our focus this year in chapel, uh, even virtually, is the gospel. Um, and every week we are um, having a conversation with folks who are out in the world uh, living it out. Last week we talked about politics and the gospel. Uh, the week before that was the community chaplain who enters into some uh, very difficult situations um, and, and has a chance to share Christ with people. Um, and today we're joined by Judy, who is a bicyclist evangelist. Well, that's a, that was tough to say. That's a um, but, but before we get to all that, Judy, tell us a little bit of, uh, about yourself. Well, first of all, I want to say greetings to all the Berean students and families and um, how exciting it is to be able to be here today because uh, I guess for me, the first thing to say is I was amongst you all for many years. So, you know, but uh, God had a plan in my life that uh, took me beyond Berean and, and uh, here I am today. But, you know, I've, I've known the Lord since 1978 and uh but uh, probably the funniest part of my life is the fact that my mother was a nun and she left the <laughs> convent. She met my dad. They got married and uh, she got out of the habit and had seven children. <laughs> so wow. so I'm, I'm the middle child. I've been the athlete of the family. And uh, the blessing is I know the Lord. I still have uh, two living sisters and two living brothers and none of them do know the Lord. Mm. So I pray for them daily. But uh neat story of how I came to know the Lord, but I do live in Lynchburg, Virginia. I've been on the road for 30 years now, pedaling bicycles and telling everybody I can about Jesus. It's such an amazing opportunity to uh, do what I love doing, talking to people about the Lord, enjoying the outside, riding a bicycle. And so I want to encourage the students too today to, uh, to just look at their gifts and talents. So it went on for years and years and I really realized that all my athletic ability was a gift from God yeah. and uh, from you know, playing collegiate basketball and bicycling, tennis. Now I'm a pickleball ambassador for Virginia and state games tournament director for pickleball stuff. And just, you know, those talents and gifts were from God. And for a long time, my, my family just kind of thought all I did was play. Wow. And, and I see now where, where God just turned my whole dream of um, bicycling across America. I was actually born in Portland, Maine. And in 1965, all seven of the kids and mom and dad, we packed up and we moved to Los Angeles. Mm. And it was pretty amazing. But on that trip, I told my brothers and sisters, someday I'm gonna bicycle across the United States. Mm -hmm. Everybody in Portland was like, look out for little Judy on her bicycle. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, as God would work it out uh, in due time and in his season, uh, I, uh, I had that opportunity. So there's a lot of gaps to fill in. I don't know where you want me to take it from well, let's here. Let's go back. You, you said something about uh, Berean, and you also said something about coming to know the Lord, and you also said something about playing um, sports. Um, and I know I know you were uh, quite a basketball player uh, back in the day. Right. Um, folks, what you might not know is Judy was scheduled to do chapel in person. Um, she was going to ride her bike from California all the way back home to Virginia, straight across, right? And, and she's gonna tell you more how she does evangelism um, about that. Uh, but she was gonna tell you this story in person um, back in, uh, right, before the, right before the lockdown. Yeah, yeah right before, and she was in town and it was gonna happen. Um, but anyway, tell us, tell us about, you. go back to Berean and your time there, but maybe just before that, tell us how you came to know the Lord and maybe tie it in with some basketball. Sure. Well, it all kind of does tie in together. So I, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm an Air Force veteran. So it's been an honor to have served our country. And I salute all those who have done that or part of their own families have done that. I married my Air Force recruiter and I uh, have a wonderful son named Steve. 
Uh, unfortunately, I was beaten and abused and uh, was left. Steve and I were left when he was three years old and I was 24. And I had, I had to kind of make it on my own. And so I had just a high school education at that point. So I started going to college. And in the evenings, as I'm studying and being home, be, being a mom became my major priority. I realized it was my responsibility. I, uh, I picked up my, my Catholic Bible. In fact, that's all I had. And I decided to uh, read some of the New Testament. So I'm studying for my college degree, which was in physical education and health and raising this son and trying to figure out where was God in the midst of all of that abuse. And um, it, some of it was the fact that um, I didn't understand, having raised as a Catholic, why I was treated the way I was treated, you know, by my ex-husband. I mean, I was a good, quote, moral girl, did all the right things, you know, whatever. So the Bible started giving me some answers. Well, after my second year in college at Fullerton College, uh, I had the opportunity, I played basketball there. Several schools started to recruit me to come finish my last two years in college. UCLA was one of them, uh, Cal State Long Beach. And, but my dad had just helped my son, Steve and I get our first house and we moved out to Riverside. <laughs> Five miles from the house was California Baptist University. The coach came, watched me play. She says, oh, I know you could play anywhere, but I understand you live here in Riverside, it's your hometown. And it really, again, it came to my son, uh, five miles to go to school or a 90 minute plus drive to UCLA. It was kind of the no brainer. I didn't want to leave my son that long. I wanted to focus on school, get my education so I could support him. So to get into Cal Baptist, I had to sign a statement of faith. I believe Jesus Christ was the son of God, died on the cross. I mean, I knew all that. Raised 12 years in a Catholic school and church and all mass, all that stuff. But the first few months that I was there, wow, did I notice a difference in my professors, my coaches, even my teammates. Hmm. They had a joy and a peace that I didn't have. And as they started to share with me about the Lord and the truth of the gospel, that we're all sinners and we need to be saved by the grace of God, not by our good works. Wow. It really just kind of hit me. And um, so I was playing basketball at Cal Baptist and one weekend my teammates were all going to be missionaries through the Southern Baptist Convention that coming summer. And they kidnapped me and took me to Hume Lake there in the Fresno area mm -hmm. and arranged for my son. I never, my son was always with me. He had a matching uniform even, you know, <laughs> so everybody knew who he belonged to, number 44. And but anyway, I went to this retreat and the, uh, the seminary student started off saying, you know, you're not here. I'm not here to talk to you about being saved. You wouldn't be here if you weren't saved saved. It was 80 to 100 college students from all over California. They all were going to get their assignments that weekend. I'm sitting in the middle of this room packed with college kids. And I was probably the oldest at that point. I was 28 years old and a junior in college. And uh, he says, I want to ask you one question. Are you living every day of your life for the Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, that is such a question. We should wake up every morning. Lord, let me live today for you and you alone to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when that meeting was over that night and beautiful music, I'd never heard praise music and stuff like that before. And my teammates, three of them, all gathered around. We sat up. We were, we were in people's homes. And they started sharing the basics, really the basic of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I listened and I was like, well, yeah, but you got to do this. And, and you, you know, you got to do this. And, you, you know, my priest always said, you know, if you go to mass and you, you say your rosary beads and you do this stuff, you'll, you'll end up in heaven. And, and I didn't have any, I never really heard of repentance or, or even the free gift of salvation. Early that next morning, I remember just falling to my knees when I woke up and kneeling beside the bed, the, uh, the rest of the group had already gotten up and all were at breakfast, I guess. And there was a Bible sitting at the, at the uh, end table of the house where we were staying. And I just opened it up and it must have had one of those little tags, you know, that you have in your Bible, because it was Psalm 25. And when I went back to the calendar, hmm. my salvation date was February 25th of 1978. And Psalm 25 says, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my heart, and thee do I trust. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. And I think I felt in my life 
if I did enough good things, if I was the best athlete, the best student, the best mom, whatever it was, that would find favor with God. And, you know, I would get to heaven. Well, anyway, I came to know the Lord that day. And boy, is life taken amazing turns. So I graduated uh, from Cal Baptist, offered to play professional, or actually recruited or drafted, as the term was, to play for the San Francisco Pioneers on the first women's professional basketball league. It started in 1978. And that was a real honor. And um, I really wanted to do it. But again, it was my son. It was like Steve was now going to go into second grade after I graduated from college. What was best for Steve? Well, here's a real funny thing. So I'm playing in a game at Cal Baptist. It's our last game of the season before playoffs. And we're at the Masters College. Yeah. And two gentlemen from Berean Christian High School were in the <laughs> audience watching that game, hoping to find a young lady from the Masters College that had a degree in physical education, uh, who wanted to coach to come up to Berean and help really build the women's athletic program. Well, there was not one senior, and they didn't do their homework, I guess, ahead of time. There was not one senior that was a physical education major uh, on the master's team. Hmm. And so they went to the coach at Cal Baptist and said, do you have a senior on your team or whatever? Well, I was the captain. I scored 39 points that night. We won by seven. And uh, so, and I fouled out with like a minute and a half to go. And uh, anyway, those two men from the, the, uh, uh, the athletic, the booster club or whatever, you know, they, uh, they sat there and talked with me afterwards and met my son. He was always with me. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'd like to uh, bring you up to Berean and, and meet, uh, meet the principal and, uh, Dr. Tempass at the time, yes. Mr. Tempass, oh. and uh, and just see if there's a job for me, you wow. know, see if this would work out. So that's my connection. So I went up there as this very young Christian, <laughs> <laughs> the Berean Christian High School. Yeah. But you know, I I love people. At that point, I, I really came to love the Lord the year and a half or two years or less or whatever it had been since I'd been saved. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they offered me the position. I know I didn't have to, the right answers for all the questions they had for me. I didn't know what sanctification by grace meant. I mean, they're throwing this stuff out. I'm like, all I know is the cross. I know what Jesus did. I know I'm saved. If you want someone to care about your students, uh, I'm organized. I'm an administrator type person. I will give everything I can to these girls at Berean to teach them the basics, to mold them as a team, you know, mm -hmm. and they hired me. And so yeah. I, was there, I was there for several years, six years, I think it was 1979, 1986. And, uh, but awesome. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was, I was, uh, I wasn't around then. <laughs> no. I don't remember you, but I know Dr. Tempass. Yes. Uh, we go to church together. Um, and so that's going to be fun to catch up with him um, about you and that, that story that you've told. Yeah. Uh, but you've been a Christian for 42 years now. Yeah. And, um, and you're an evangelist. You are a missionary. So tell us about what you're doing now and how that came about. Well, I left Berean. Uh, I left uh, the area there in 1987 because Liberty University offered me a job. And uh, I got to Liberty and I'd, I'd already finished a master's degree mm -hmm. and I uh, did marketing and development for their online school program that had just started. And Dr. Falwell had this vision of, you know, being able to uh, get kids or anybody to, to go to classes and finish their education. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I did my master's degree through Liberty for counseling. It was their first graduating class. It was pretty fun to kind of go back to the campus where it was way back then. And, and I still live there in Lynchburg. So the beautiful campus, I know, I'm sure there's students from Berean that, that go yeah. to Liberty. I mean, you know, people from all over the country. But anyway, I was, I was given this great job of um, really development for the online school. And being a veteran, I, I realized, you know, a lot of veterans need education to get, you know, next, next pay raise uh, for their own, you know, benefit, whatever, teachers especially. I started traveling around the country for Liberty and going to ACSI teachers conventions, setting up a booth and, and letting teachers get the, 
you know, the extra credits they need to be certified for whatever or to get the next degree. And so anyway, the school grew and grew and grew. And today, Liberty has over 100,000 students. Wow. They bring on close to a million dollars a day just in, you know, revenue from the uh, online school. And, wow. the Started it off. and yeah. it's an NCAA Division One school, beautiful facilities and all that stuff. Well, anyway, a lot of things were happening. 1990, I'd only been there about three years. And um, I mean, God, one thing I always want to challenge people is remember God's in control and all things work together for good. As we know from Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, in March of 1990, there was like going to be some major cutbacks. There was a lot of changes. My dean, I was the assistant dean now at this point. The, the dean called me into his office and he said uh, on a Monday, he said, Judy, I, I've got to, I want to go to law school. I've got to do it. The, the school is in capable hands with you. Uh, I know I can leave. I know I can leave and, and everything's going to continue as it is. And, and you're going to make it even grow more. And I had brought the school from 150 students to 5,000 in three years. And so they were happy. They were happy with that. I mean, Dr. Fall would call me every day, practically. What's our numbers, you know? Well, anyway, and Wednesday we had a meeting, a long and short of it all. But what finally happened is Friday, the same week I was told he was putting in the paperwork for me to be the dean, I had just finished my PhD program. I just had to finish my dissertation. And on that Friday, he called me in. We're sitting down talking. Another colleague was in the room and he said, you know, there's got to be cutbacks and all this stuff happening. He said, they've decided as of yesterday to cut out a lot of middle management positions. And he said, your job is being eliminated. Hmm. I was shocked, blindsided as the football term would be, right? You know about yeah. that. So I said, all right. I sat there and I realized, wow, God must have something else he wants me to do that's not going to happen here. My son was a senior in high school. He got a full scholarship to go to Liberty, which was a real blessing. And I don't know, about a year, year and a half went by. I let him finish high school, graduate, start Liberty. Finally, I sat down with Steve and I said, you know, we bought this house for you and me. You want to get your own apartment. I don't need a big house. And uh, I said, I want to go wherever God wants me to go. And mm -hmm. I said, I want to fulfill my dream since I was 15. I want to bicycle across the country. Just get out and pray and see what God has for me. Yeah. So I got hired by this bicycle organization and did marketing for them. And then my assignment was to do marketing across America for this across America trip. It was mm -hmm. on that first trip in 1991. Actually, 1990, I biked from Maine to Florida wow. with this group and, uh, had the neat blessing of um, leading the first person ever to the Lord on that trip. But mm. the cross America trip was from Los Angeles to Boston. And on that trip, there were 60 people. And every day people asked us as we went through these little towns, whether it was Walnut Creek or, or Albuquerque or all, wherever, people always said, well, who are you and where are you going? Mm -hmm. And the team would say the name of our group and we we're bicycling, you know, Los Angeles to Boston. And every day, you know, for the first week or so, I'd come back and we stayed in, in motel rooms. It's like, Lord, that's not who I am. That's not where I'm going. I said, I know the answer. First John 3, 1 says, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. Yeah. And our citizenship is in heaven, Philippians mm -hmm. 3, 20. I said, what is missing? I knew all the great commission verses, you know, go and make disciples, right? Well, that's somebody else, all right? That's uh, somebody else should be doing that. Um, you know, but as I was reading through my Bible that night, sitting in this little motel room after we had pedaled 60 or 70 miles a day, we would ride. I remember just going through and reading through the concordance. And I, I got to Romans 1 16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God until salvation to everyone who believes. I said, Lord, if you will speak through me, I will let people know who you are but I don't know really how to do that. Mm. You've got a copy of my book and yeah. that, that's been written to encourage Christians how to share their faith. It's yeah. how to talk to anybody, anytime, any place about Jesus.